Here are 10 more indie game demos to check out for the Steam Next Festival, beginning with this absolutely gorgeous puzzle building title all about trains, where you're laying down tracks and connecting station to station. As you do so, the surrounding environment will change, where it really has some of the best voxel art that I have seen, which is a rare compliment from me since I generally do not like this art style, where even though I'm not really a trained person myself, this game certainly has my attention. On a similar note is Bulwark Falconeer Chronicles, a spin-off of the aerial combat title The Falconeer, where you're building your own bulwark or fortress in this sandbox title. Build your bulwark. However, it is not a building toy like Townscaper, but rather has more interactive elements, with people to hire, enemies to fight and resources together, being set in an open world in which you are free to build in any direction and looks neat. This video is brought to you by RoboBeat, a roguelite rhythm first-person shooter whose demo is available right now until the 26th of June, being an all-action title worth checking out. You are trapped in the ever-changing manner of a robot showman, having to fight against an army of contraptions and enemies in order to escape, where the name of the game is to keep your trigger finger on the pulse. You will maximize your damage by firing to the beat, having a variety of movement options like wall runs, double jumps and bunny hops to keep the action moving. In the full version, you will be able to add your own custom music to the game, so if it looks interesting, check it out via the link in the description below and wishlist the game. A curious roguelite monster taming RPG is Evil Links, where you're assembling a party of cute and cuddly creatures and venturing out to do battle. It has a fascinating visual style, which is not pure 2D pixel art, but rather uses 3D models where it has the classic turn-based combat system from games like Pokemon and should feel familiar. The gimmick here is to fill up your Evilpedia, getting to see and know all of these creatures, eventually learning about and using their hidden traits and abilities to your advantage, where the roguelite structure should provide plenty of replayability. Survival in this desolate land. It's all about harsh choices. By yourself, all you've got around you is desert. Choose to band together with others, and you've got life. Water. Civilization. An intriguing survival city builder title is Homeseek, one that is set in a post-apocalyptic dried up wasteland that was once Earth, where you need to lead your group in order to survive. This is Frostpunk-like in nature, but in a different setting, where there are factions to manage and to keep happy since every person is critical, with various game modes like a story campaign and sandbox experience as well. Choice is always right around the corner. I caught wind of this game on Twitter, where Within a Dead City is a strategy game with a minimalist pixel art look, but what is most interesting is that this is inspired by the Majesty games which are awesome if you have not played them. The 
main thing that you are doing is that you are growing and expanding an outpost which attracts various heroes and adventurers where you can send them out on missions but you are unable to directly control them, instead having to influence them through various bounties that you place on monsters. As such, the indirect, almost god game kind of setup is fascinating so it's nice to see someone attempt this in 2023. ugly in what must have been last year, where this is a pretty hand-drawn puzzle platformer which looks neat, but as always, it's a horrible title for SEO purposes. You play as a tormented nobleman, confronting the traumas of his past, with the main mechanic being a mirror which will allow you to solve puzzles and to progress further. This also has boss fights which is interesting and should be out later this year, so if curious, give the demo a try. To hunt vampires, you need guns. Lots of guns. Things have really come full circle again with this game and I have to applaud how bold this developer is, where Vampire Hunters is Vampire Survivors meets Doom, being a first person title that adds the ridiculous over the top nature of the Bullet Heaven smash hit by just allowing you to stack guns and upgrades that fill up the entire screen. As such, it is very different from its main inspiration but just looks like awesome, dumb fun, even extending to the title, which of course I have to applaud. An awesome turn-based JRPG that I've been keeping an eye on is Born of Bread, one that is of course inspired by Paper Mario where you play as a flower golem in a world where beings from another age are causing havoc in the world and you and your friends have to neutralize this threat. It is not as dire as it seems since everything just looks so adorable here, where it has the Paper Mario-like elements of active turn-based combat as well as overworld exploration and puzzles. I think that this looks absolutely fantastic and looks even better than when I last covered this, making it of interest. I've had my eye on this card-based RPG for quite a while, primarily due to its pixel art, but where it's a deck builder that is not like Slay the Spire, having a very different combat system, and it's also not a roguelite, instead having distinct character campaigns to play through, although there is a roguelite mode if you want some endless replayability. The overworld exploration is awesome, with an almost Magic the Gathering style combat system where you're placing units down on the board, which makes Cross Blitz a title of interest and should be out later this year as well, where you can find more upcoming pixel art titles in this video. <laughs> 